stand at the door and knock. Yes. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him mm -hmm. and he with me. Revelation 3.20. Good afternoon, family and friends, brothers and sisters. We welcome you here to the Garfield Greater Heights Church of Christ, where our minister here is Brother Kevin D. McHenry. Here we speak where the Bible speaks and we are silent where the Bible is silent. Our address is 3304 East 126th Street. Anytime our doors are open, you are yes. so very welcome to attend. Yes. We may not take up all your time, but we're going to take up some of your time. Amen. Amen. I won't labor and hold you back any longer, so I ask that those who are here and those who are streaming social media and telecommunication, please go with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father God. It is at this time, Father God, that we offer you our services. Father, we ask that you crown the man of God who comes in the form of Kevin D. McHenry, that you give him a ready recollection of all he had studied. And Father God, you help us to receive our portion of today's message. We ask, Father God, that we change. You help us to change all that we know that we have been doing wrong. And everything from here on out, Father, we do to please you, our Heavenly King. We offer this prayer, Father God, in a sweet and smelling savor. And our service also, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Our first song will be This World Is Not My Home. The first two verses of This World Is Not My Home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up. Somewhere beyond the blue, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have nothing like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord. I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then the Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me through heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. Our next song will be When We All Get to Heaven. It'll be the first two verses of that song while we all get to heaven. Sing the one bit love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion the right and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. 
while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will open, spread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Our next song will be going to view that holy city. I'm going to view that holy city. That's where we'll all say. Followed by the song, we'll have our communion and our offering. You know that I am going to view that holy city. I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. You know that I am gonna view that holy city. And I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. One of these days, you know that I am gonna feast on milk and honey. Oh, I am gonna feast on milk and honey one of these days. You know that I am gonna feast on milk and Honey, and I'm gonna feast on milk and honey. I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. One of these days, you know that I am gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, I am gonna sing and never get tired one of these days. You know that I am gonna sing and never get tired. I'm gonna sing and never get tired. I'm gonna feast on milk and honey. I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. One of these days, you know that I am gonna sit at the welcome table. Oh, I am gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. You know that I am gonna sit at the welcome table. Table, and I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sing and never get tired. I'm gonna feast on milk and honey. I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. One of these days, you know that I am gonna see my loving Jesus. Oh, I am gonna see my loving Jesus one of these days. You know that I am gonna see my loving. Jesus, and I'm going to see my loving Jesus. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sing and never get tired. I'm going to feast on milk and honey. I'm going to view that holy city one of these days. One of these days, you know that I am going to view that holy city. Oh, I am going to view that holy city one of these days. You know that I I'm gonna view that holy city. I'm gonna view that holy city one of these days. One of these days. Amen. 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 At this time, as we prepare our hearts and minds to communion with our Lord, say we will be singing a beautiful prayer. In the Bible we read of a beautiful prayer, a prayer sent to heaven above. It was prayed by a heart that was made of wicked and filled with such wonderful
and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink, eat all of it. For this is my body of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And we go to our Father's prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time just thanking you for being in our lives and giving us an opportunity to have eternal life with these things in your name. Amen. Amen. six and seven. But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which sows bountiful will also reap bountiful. Mm -hmm. Every man according to his purpose in his heart, that so let him give not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And we go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, 
We come to you at this time just thanking you for giving this opportunity to build a church of treasure with these things in your name. Amen. Amen. lost in sin, but Jesus took me in and did a little life from heaven till my soul.
Lord since that day. so thankful that we have just one more day mm -hmm. to worship you. Father, we pray that our worship would be acceptable in your sight. Father, we're just thankful for Jesus Christ. We're thankful that the salvation has been brought down to mm -hmm. everybody, Father. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for Jesus that he bore the sins of the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray right now that you would empty us of all things that would hinder us from hearing your word yes, and Lord. fill us with your word, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray as your man servant come before us this morning, that you will just grant his head with wisdom and bring back to memory the things that he has studied. And that great and notable question will be asked, men and brothers, what should I do to be saved? Yes, Lord. Father, we just pray that you just be with us and guide us as we go through the furthers of this service. In your precious and darling son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Praises to Him I sing, onward I go. Closely to Him I plead, blessings there flow. I love my Savior too. Will I love my Savior? He will love me too. Seek his face. 
God is a good God. Amen. Yes. 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 And if no, nobody else says so, David said, yes. let the redeemed of the Lord yes. say so. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but for me, this has been a special week. You ought to say me too. Amen. Because this is a week that God brought you through that you never yeah. saw before. Amen. And you won't never see it again. That's right. That's right. And he brought you through in spite of who you are, but because of who he is. Amen. Amen. God is a merciful God. That old apostle Peter said that the grass withering. That's right. And the flower fades, but the word, but the word, word. but the word, word. word. Amen. of God will endure forever. And this is the word, the message that has been preached unto you, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is a good God. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, we know we've been talking about the conviction of knowing that you are saved. The conviction of knowing that you have eternal life. The conviction of knowing that you are delivered or you have been delivered. Not every child of God is convinced. Not every child of God is convicted. Not every child of God can answer with confidence, I am Deliver. Try to see how it sounds. I am. I am. Delivered. Delivered. I am. I am. Delivered. Delivered. I am. I am. Delivered. Delivered. You got to be able to say that in all time. All right. Even when you're looking at your past action and it might not look so good, you got to still be able to tell that old devil, I am. I am. Delivered. Delivered. Because there's nothing worse. The enemy, the gainsayers, the naysayers, the doubters would love to hang about your mind, trapping you in guilt and nothing. This is the ideal of asking you, am I really saved? Sometimes those questions and that doubt can skirt through the minds and challenge all your faith and all of your certainty that God is who God said he is. That's was the first mistake Eve made. It wasn't the fact that she was not adhering to her husband's words. It was the fact that she allowed a stranger to cloud her conviction yes. and cause a, a little bit, a hint of doubt. And once that was it, that's all it took, is a hint of doubt. Never doubt your salvation. Well. Never doubt your salvation. The word of God says, and I know what's written in your hearing, but please, I want you to find 1 John chapter 5 and meet me at verse 13. I'm going to ask that you read along silently as I read aloud. 1 John chapter 5. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence which we have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Now John is always speaking within the framework of God's will because when you get familiar with God, when you become acquainted with God, when you're associated with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, your prayers will be in alignment with what God has for you. You don't have to worry about asking a miss because you'll know what to pray for and what not to pray for. All right. If anyone sees his brother, this is part of being saved. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Because sometimes the Christian mind frame would be, I'm not worried about nobody, I'm just worried about myself. Mm. Then John tells the same person in 1 John chapter 3, that if you see your brother in the place of need and you don't supply it, you have not been translated from death to life. That's right. Amen. Mm. Amen. 
So if anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not leading to death. Kind of a confusing statement here. I wish I had time to walk through this. He shall ask, and God will for him give life to those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is a sin that leads to death. Y'all remember that, right? Yeah. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus said that all sin shall be forgiven except the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. That's the unforgivable. What does that look like? It looks like the unrepentant heart that decides never to turn toward God. Hmm. All, of, all sin, Paul says, uh, have a death sentence attached to them. He says the wages of sin is death. But John is talking to the believer that has been converted, the believer that has been saved, the believer that has been delivered, the believer whose blood of Jesus Christ has washed the slate clean. Therefore, if you're a child of God, you're a delivered child of the king, you can't sin to death because you will always have the unction of the Holy Spirit that compels you to repent. And if you see somebody in an awkward state, he says, talk to them and pray for them. Ask God for their deliverance. But he says, no need. Not that you don't need to pray for somebody who's outside of repentance, but he's just saying, that's not who I'm talking about here. Remember Christ in John 17, he says, Dear Father, I'm praying for these. Talking about his disciples, John chapter 17. But he says, but I pray not for the world, but for these that God has given unto me. So there's a time you have to know how to pray. You don't know how to pray if you don't read your Bible. You just say a prayer that encompasses everything all the time, but you're not praying in order. That's right. You got to know when to pray for what and who to pray for. At what time? The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not leading to death. Those are the ones you can call people back from. Paul says in Galatians chapter 6 verse number 1. For you who are spiritual, if a brother be overtaken in a fault... Restore such a one. That's your dude. That's part of being saved. This idea of I don't bother nobody. Just let people do what they do. They're on their own. They got to answer to God. You need to ask yourself, are you saved with that attitude? Mm -hmm. If you can feel that way about your brother, your sister, that you don't care how they're living to an almighty God, then you need to ask yourself, are you you saved. Y'all got quiet. Because that's the mentality of too many Christians. Mm -hmm. Paul says, if you who are spiritual, that means you have a healthy concern about their well-being as it pertains to their spiritual state with God. Restore such a one. With meekness. He's talking about tenderness. For those of you who have been with me for some time, you know I've went through this scripture before. Galatians 6, 1, the word there, uh, Paul is using a phrase of a medical terminology which speaks to the setting of joints out of place. Paul says when you notice a brother who is a member of the body being out of place, then with surgical precision, tenderness, and kindness, set them back in place. That's what that word there means, restore. It's a medical phrase. Paul calls for us to restore one another when we see them overtaken in a fault. We know that no one who is born of God lives in sin. That's what that phrase brings out to. No one, listen to this. He says, we know. See, he's not speaking as an apostle. He's not speaking as a bishop. He's speaking as a Christian brother. We know. 
Y'all say amen. You won't say it because you probably the one living in sin. Mm -hmm. We know that no one who is born again, he's going back to verse 13, no one who knows he is saved can live and plan and plot to sin. But he who was born of God keeps him. And the evil one does not touch him. The evil one can't cling on to him. I shared it with you before. When you have the Holy Ghost residing inside of you, there's no such thing as the devil getting in there because one stronger than him has already kicked him out. Amen. Amen. But he will ride you. And if you hold on to the word of God, it'll be a slippery ride. Because the apostle says right here, the evil one can't touch him. He means the evil one can't take hold of him. The evil one can't cling to him. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Elliot Ness and his boys. He's untouchable. <laughs> He's talking about being overtaken. Yes, we all go on occasion. Look here, we all, from the back to the front, from the front to the back, we all go on occasion. Uh, every now and then, we're going to do something we don't have no business doing. Right. And for the person who says they have not sinned, they must be living in a comatose state. Well. <laughs> <laughs> they just came out of a coma since they got saved. We know that we are of God and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one, Ephesians chapter 2. And we know that the Son of God has come and he's given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, the God of salvation and eternal life. Do the children guard yourselves, goes back into that father role, elder, pastor, bishop. So he addresses the whole church. Little children, guard yourself from idols. Anything that takes the place of God or causes you to even choose is idolatry. Did you hear what I said? Anything that takes the place of God or puts you in a position to choose is idolatry. Because nothing, Janelle O'Connor said it best, mm. nothing compares to you. That's right. Talking about God. Yes. And it ought not be nothing that you're trying to balance to see if it's comparable. Right. Right. Mm. We can't be a Christian all the time. Sometimes you got to answer to the world. Ask yourself, are you saved? Everybody does something. Ask yourself, are you saved? The question that I had before you, and I left it with you last week, Saved, are you guilty as charged? You said a few, a few minutes ago, I am delivered. Isn't there enough evidence to convict you? You know, in the indictment process, what takes place is there is a collection of information of pending charges or that lets you know you are believed to be the perpetrator of a crime. And they collect enough information and enough evidence, and then they take it before either the grand jury or a holy magistrate. And the magistrate will listen to all of the information, they present all of the evidence, and then the magistrate or the grand jury decide, they deliberate, and they decide, is there enough evidence to indict? <laughs> they exhaustively weigh the charges 
against the evidence and they can decide no indictment will be handed down. The question I have for you is, is there enough evidence to convict you of being saved? Can the charges of being saved stand? Will there be an indictment or will the magistrate dismiss the case? Here are the charges. This is a lengthy indictment. Your honor, your holy and honorable magistrate, the defendant is being accused of reading their Bible diligently. He said, throw your indictment away already. <laughs> said, I ain't guilty. Let me out of here. <laughs> yeah, these are the charges against one who says they know that they have eternal life. Your Honor, the second part of their first charge of reading their Bible diligently is they are found to believe what they read. And what they read is true. Are you guilty? Your Honor, the next charge that we have is the defendant is accused of studying the word and proving all things. No longer being tossed to and fro like children in Ephesians chapter 4 by every wind of doctrine. Got a lot of Christians believe a little bit of Hindu, a little bit of apostolic teaching, a little bit of Jehovah Witness teaching, a little bit of Islamic teaching, a little bit of world teaching. Mm -hmm. And they try to blend them all together mm -hmm. like potluck. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. We're all trying to worship God. Christians in the house of God who are being charged with being saved can look at somebody that they love and say, it doesn't matter. They still believe in God. Are you saved? That's right. Or do you believe all churches matter? Your Honor, the defendant is accused of praying. Hmm. And praying in the first degree. Mm -hmm. See, don't just pray when you're in trouble. Y'all remember Daniel? The king ordered a decree, Daniel chapter 4, 5 and 6. The king ordered a decree, and, and the men tricked the king into signing a decree that says, if anyone is caught bowing down and praying to anything other than this idol, he will be cast into a lion's den. So Daniel, the Bible says, Daniel went to his room facing the east like the children of Israel were commanded or thought to do because that was the place of the holy city. So he's facing the east and he's in this window where everybody can see him. And the Bible says he prayed as was his custom. What does the custom mean? It's his everyday doing. He's not praying about the decree. He's not praying about the lion's den. He's not praying because he's in trouble. He prays because it's his habit. Mm -hmm. He's not praying for a house. He's not praying for a car. He's not praying for his life. He's praying because he recognizes Yahweh as the one to be prayed to. Amen. 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 Right. Are you guilty? Your Honor, we'd like to say there's a second part of that charge also. Because not only is the defendant guilty of praying in the first degree, but he believes that God will answer his prayers. And he has an expectation that something supernatural is about to happen. Oh, yes. Are you guilty? Or are you the believer that pray and then hunt your shoulders? Well, I don't know. I don't know if God's going to do it or not, but, you know, I still pray. James is a double-minded man. Receives nothing. Mm -hmm. You got to pray with conviction. I'm praying because I believe in the supernatural manifestation of God right here in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. 
things that wouldn't ordinarily happen if God doesn't intercede. Y'all quiet. Well, I know God got me that job. Yeah, along with the 20 other people that got the same job. Right. Y'all quiet. Y'all say, oh, wow, he hit us right there. Yeah, because God answers prayers, but we got to believe in the God that answers prayers in the most supernatural way that otherwise wouldn't take place if God doesn't intervene. Y'all quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you guilty of praying in the first degree with the expectation that God hears and will answer? Can they convict you? Can you be indicted? Your honor, the defendant, is also accused, here it is, of tithing and offering even when money's tight. Woo! Are you saved? Are you delivered or do you peel God off coins hmm. while you making hundreds? Well, yeah, I have to give him about four or five hours. I got to say this for. Mm -hmm. Are you saved? Mm -hmm. Do you know that you have eternal life? Your honor, the defendant is guilty of tithing and offering, here it is, bountifully. They even have the audacity to give above 10%. Mm. 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 Can you be found guilty? Your Honor, uh, we'd like to cite the case of Corinth versus Macedonia in the penal law of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. <laughs> Guilty of tithing when the Bible says they were a poor people, but yet they gave above all the rich people because they first had gave themselves to God. Hmm. Well. Can you be found guilty? Your Honor, the next charge that we have, oh, this is a lengthy indictment. Your Honor, the defendant is also alleged of worshiping, mm. even in the pandemic. Mm. 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 Church doors shut and people stop worshiping. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody said you might get sick if you go to a gathering. People stop going to gathering and stop worshiping all together. And then the honorable magistrate, he interrupts the court. He says, are these just public acts of worshiping that they're being in charge with, or do they worship at home as well? Y'all quiet. Because mm -hmm. some have decided to just be home and, and watch the replay of somebody's sermon in the middle of the night, and the sermon puts them to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Wow. Come on. Mm -hmm. Then he'll just wake up and click light. Don't know what was being preached, what was taught about. Are you saved? Can you be charged? Can the indictment hold up? And the court says, Your Honor, that will be revealed as the case develops. How's it look for you? Are you guilty? Are you guilty of these charges? Are you guilty of being saved? Are you guilty of knowing that you have eternal life? Or will you be set free by the court and found innocent? Your Honor, the last charge that we have is they're guilty of acting like Christians in the hood. <laughs> so in the hood, Your Honor said, uh, could the court please Explain that's in the hood. The court doesn't do good with world vernacular. And says, Your Honor, this person believes uh, in their being saved even in their husbandhood. 
He acts like the Lord Jesus Christ over the wife he gives himself for. Okay, Ephesians now. chapter 5. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. This defendant, she acts like a wife in her wifehood, one that subjects herself to the husband as the head of the house. Acting like she's saved, he's saved even in his singlehood. Does she know how to keep herself from the slippery tongue of the wolf? That's right. Mm -hmm. Who does nothing but devour. Y'all quiet. Somebody told y'all sex was a game. Sex ain't no game. God gave it to the married. That's right. Whoever it is, if you're doing it up without the marriage, you're a sin. Ask yourself, are you saved? They don't like this kind of preaching. Mm -hmm. They want to hear something and make them giggle. This ain't no play thing. Even in their workhood, when everybody's gossiping, backbiting, doing everything, they're composed and they keep themselves, they're disciplined and they're tempered. Can you be indicted of being one that believes you have eternal life and have been saved? The apostle ends right there and keep yourself from idols. Anything that can take hold of you and pull against the tapestry of your salvation, you have to ask yourself, are you saved? Some of you go right on this. I don't worry about what he said. I'm not saying this in the word of God. And God says what he means when the apostle asks, Are you a child of God? In their teenage hood, just because you're young, you don't get a pass. If you put on Jesus Christ, you ought to be moving yourself toward the image of the Son. Your Honor, the grandest of all these indictments and these charges, or these charges and these accusations, is the defendant is accused of believing on Jesus Christ for the total of their salvation. It's not about being good. It's not about good worship. It's not about giving good. It's not about singing songs. It's not about praising. Uh, these are the works that the apostle talks about, not by works should any man boast. You're saved because of grace. And the grace is in Jesus Christ. So what about all these things you just named? You, know, you do those things not to be saved. You do them because you are saved. That's right. That's right. Will there be an indictment? Is a conviction inevitable? Or will your case be dismissed for lack of evidence? Do you look like you're saved when you're walking around Monday through Saturday? Mm. Does your conversation sound like you've been saved Monday through? Never mind what you put on Sunday morning. What do you look like Monday through Saturday? What do you look like in the house with your husband and your wife and your children? Is that why your children don't like church? Because they see something different at home. <laughs> I'm quiet. I might need security to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your children don't like other church members because you talk about them like dogs when you're at home. Where all are you? Well, y'all already said ain't nobody good in the church. Where are they? That's why they won't come. Because you done crucified everybody in the church. Why should they come? Mm -hmm. We don't have enough ministries. No, we don't have enough parenting at home that love the children and make the children want to be at the church. That's right. Keep talking about all the church folk and then wonder why the children don't want to go to church.
They want to go to Six Flags. Why? Because you pump Six Flags up. <laughs> pump the church up. Peter, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 55 through 62. We don't have time to go through the entirety of the text. Luke chapter 22, verses 55 through 66. Peter is being charged. They've just arrested the Savior in the garden. They've just arrested the Savior, and they're leading him. And Peter is walking beside him, and now Peter kind of drifts a little bit as he see the stones and, and the slapping and the spitting and the hitting and he kind of just uh, he kind of just moves a little bit like you know like uh, uh, just a little bit but somebody eyes Peter and they say him He's one of them. Peter said, uh-huh. <laughs> no, not me. Y'all laughing. Because at work, when they call you the holy one, old two goody, do you have to do something bad to prove them wrong? Y'all young folk, they get to calling you corny. That means you got to do something bad to show them you ain't corny. You got to look more like the world so you can fit in. Oh, for go ahead and toss a couple back to you, get sloppy, sloppy. Because you got to show them that you're not too good to drink with them, get high with them, party with them. You got to show them that it ain't like that. No, I ain't with him. As he's warming his hand by the fire. A little bit further down, he moves away from the fire because he's been caught. A little bit further down the road, somebody said, you were with him. Uh-huh. Not miss. You talk like him. I know you from the hood. You talk ghetto like he talk. No, that's not me. I'm not like the other. No. I'm not a Christian. Ha! Big right deal. <laughs> yeah, Peter changes his vernacular, tone, straightens up. Takes a little bop out of his walk. Got to make sure they don't think he's with Jesus. I says, wow. Man, you sound, you sound just like him. Peter was being accused of knowing, following, even talking like him. But he denied me him. Then one more person says, man, you got to be with him. The Bible says Peter started swearing and cursing. Man, I told y'all <laughs> on everything, on my children, <laughs> on my mama, <laughs> on my grandmama. I ain't with him. <laughs> the Bible says I'm like, on my fishing rod. Uh, since he wasn't on my boat. <laughs> since he wasn't fishing, man. <laughs> Had to put some value on the table to make sure they knew he was. Oh, man, he wouldn't put his boat on the line if he was lying. <laughs> <laughs> Peter denied. The charge wouldn't stick even though he was with them because Peter is fighting the charges all the way. Even with your t-shirt that's got the cross and, and the Jesus and the crown of thorns on your chest. Even with the Psalm 23 tattoo on your neck. Even with the John 316 bumper sticker. Even while you're singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Will the charges stick before the holy magistrate? that you believe you have eternal life? Are you living like you've been saved? Do you look like one who knows 
He's in Christ. Here it is. And Christ is in you. You see, the charge was only good <laughs> while he was in the presence of Jesus. You remember that? Oh, Lord, you're not going to the cross. If they take you, you have to take me too. They kill you, you have to kill me. Y'all quiet. That's modern day Christians and they Sunday best. Everybody, where you going to church? See you at the club at the church. I'll be there. And you coming through? Yeah, I'll be there with time. Now that's that's Peter. I'm not gonna let him take you, Lord. I'm with you, I'm with you. See, but we all can go through these changes here. See, this is not a make you feel guilty. This is just a, an assessment. Mess. Assess yourself. Because this same Peter, people can grow. People can change. People can develop a more healthy relationship with the Lord. No two people are on the same level of faith because God is moving differently in every life. Y'all can say amen there. And we need to get away from the church that feels like everybody has to be on the same level. All we got to do is everybody believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Savior of all mankind. You don't have to believe like Kevin believed. Kevin, don't have to believe like John believed. We don't have to have the same faith. We got to believe in the faith. Stop judging one another because someone doesn't look as strong as you determined they should look. Amen. Amen. Run out of that church and never come back no more, no more. Look at Peter now. Somebody say, how you like me now? Acts chapter 4. We've got to be careful that all of our actions are aligned with the charges even when the population and popularity is in not favorable. Sometimes you don't want to be charged of being a good person. Some people get some, oh, you good, you think you do good, huh? No, no, yes, yes. Oh, you one of them Bible people. No, it ain't like that. Yes, yes, I'm one of them Bible people. All you do is say, you one of them Brian fans. Yeah. You like the Browns, yeah. You like Jesus? Oh, it ain't like that. You know, I go to church sometimes. All right. <laughs> Acts chapter 4, verse 17. Acts chapter, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. And we just say, Peter, sometimes people just have to grow up. Sometimes people have to go through a few things. Sometimes the Holy Ghost has just got to get a hold of people to help them realize that Jesus is the Savior. Everybody hasn't had a Holy Ghost encounter, even though they have them inside of them. Acts chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. Y'all know what's going on here. Peter. And John, I believe it's Peter and John, have just got finished healing a man who's been crippled at the gate. Gate beautiful. And so they've been arrested, they've been charged, they've been beat a little bit, and so, and so now they're on trial again. Peter's on trial again. Acts chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, but so that it will not spread any further among the people, let us warn them to speak no longer to any man in the name of Jesus. And when they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. See, but Peter, at this place, he's guilty as being charged. 
and all the people, they know. Go back to verse 13. Now as they observed the confidence, King James says boldness, of which they spake, and understood King James says that they were ignorant and unlearned men. They were amazed and began to recognize. King James says it better. And they took these men to be unlearned men. But then they remembered that they had been with the Lord. That word unlearned in the Greek is where we get our word idiot from. They thought Peter and them to be uneducated, just idiots. These men ain't smart. They're fishermen, everyday Galileans. But then it dawned on them that who they had put their trust in was greater than any education. They remembered that they had been with Jesus. Now Peter can stand the charge and be found guilty as charged. They marveled at their boldness. And they took liberty to consider them idiots and uneducated. But they remembered, they had to acknowledge that their boldness and the conviction of their talk, here is the answer, was because they were guilty of being saved. When you're guilty of being saved and you know it, you don't care about the charges. You don't care about the beating. You want the holy magistrate to find you guilty of believing in your salvation. Amen. Somebody said that the judgment will begin at the house of God. And it's not always the judgment of an eschatological talking. It's sometimes just the fact that those in the house of God will be tried the hardest because you're trying to do right. Mm -hmm. You want to do right. And sometimes that charge and that uh, judgment from the world's beatings and whooping is more than you can handle. But you've got to hold on Amen. to God's unchanging hand. talk to you about Daniel as we get out of here. That's what, it, that's, none of y'all don't worry about that. That's between me and one person. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel and his three compadres were found to be taken liking by the king. And so they're being acknowledged as being different being more educated, sophisticated guys. And uh, they said, come on in here because we want to feed you. You're going to eat like the king eat. All the lamb. They ain't eating hog slop. They ain't eating, they ain't eating neck bones. I'm sorry, man. They're a little bit higher than this right here. <laughs> they eat lamb, the best of the cows. <laughs> See, Seafood being imported, it's the king's table. And he said, you know what? See, because sometimes in order to move you out of your conviction, the world will give you all the props of being somebody that you're not, and you fall into it. And so they said, you know what? Be with us. And so they looked at it, they thought about their salvation, they thought about Jehovah, they thought about Yahweh and their conviction. And they said, well, you know what, That's, we appreciate it, but here you go, sister. We just want to eat vegetables. <laughs> we're going to eat vegetables? We don't want none of no offense? They said, well, the king going to be mad if you don't eat. Come on, Christians. The world will be mad at you if you don't partake of what they're doing. You've got to be strong enough to defy the world. No matter what they're offering you. 
pat you on the back, pump you up, and then try to get you to eat of the forbidden fruit. I said, no, nah, we don't. I tell you what, it's between us and you. I ain't got to tell the king about it. We're going to eat vegetables. We're going to eat this little bitty uh, cornbread. We're going to be okay with this, I promise you. Just give us 10 days or 10, 10 days or a couple weeks. He said, man, when I come back, man, if y'all don't look right, I'm going to be in trouble. Because the king said, y'all got to have the best. Y'all can go read it, Daniel chapter 1, 2, and 3. So the servant went away, came back. And he looked at Shadrach, it's not their names, the name they gave him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Y'all wouldn't know the other names if I gave them to you. And then he looked at these three men, and they said, wow, they're not eating anything we served them. Watch God. And they look stronger and healthier than ever. That's right. That's right. That's right. Y'all yeah. got to know that when you stand against the world, you won't miss nothing. God will take care of you and make you look stronger and better than ever. Amen. Amen. You don't have to parlay with the world. That's right. That's right. John said that you might know. Take hold of the fact that you've been saved. You're going to stumble every now and then. I know you like steak served from the king. But after you've tasted it, get back to your vegetables and he'll hold you up. He'll hold you up. The question is, can you be indicted today? Will the holy majesty find you guilty? You know, come on, my son, leave that. Come on, get ready. <laughs> God wants us to be strengthened in the fact that He's made us a promise. And nothing can change that promise. Now, Jesus says, who's ever in my hand, nobody can take them out. And whoever I put in my father's hand, nobody can take them out. But because you operate, or too many of us operate under free will, that's something that's talking about. A lot of us get out. And I don't know if you've ever been a child before. If you ever went up to like a high building or a window or doing something, around them, and you get out or get in, then you can't get out. You start panicking. You just get trying to get back to where you were. And, and sometimes you can't get back. No one can take you from the Lord. But like Judas, you can walk away. See, it's not about once being saved, once saved, always saved. Will you hold on to your salvation? Or will you walk away from it? Think about it. If you're not a child of God, if you haven't been born again, you need to be saved today. You don't have to worry about pleading your own case. Matthew 7, 21. You don't have to plead your own case like the young ruler. You don't have to plead your own case because when you're saved, you have the comfort of the paraclete. You have the comfort of a mighty counselor. Some of y'all don't even know what I said. Yeah. But the paraclete is the Holy Ghost. And he's your counselor. He's your advocate. Yeah. And he will speak in your behalf. And Jesus is still the mediator between God and man. But he can't mediate for someone that's not his. Right. Yeah. 
If you haven't been saved today, you've got to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the resurrected Savior, the Son of God, who hung the cross of Calvary for the sins of the world. He was buried in the grave three days and got up when he showed himself among many witnesses and went on the stairs back to glory. You've got to believe it. And in obedience, be buried in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sin, and then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if you're a child of God, you've heard these indictments, you heard these charges, right now you know there's not enough to convict you. You haven't been reading. You haven't been praying, you haven't been offering, you haven't been worshiping, you haven't been showing yourself to the world as a child of God. You know the charges won't stand. All you got to do is repent. The same John, he wrote for us John chapter 1. If any man confess his sins, God is faithful. God is faithful. Somebody say, God is faithful. God is faithful. To forgive him and cleanse him of all unrighteousness. You got to confess. You ain't got to tell me what you did. You don't got to tell nobody between you and the Lord. And he'll forgive you. And you ain't got to worry no more about your salvation. Come on, man. I'm done. Let's be standing. Think about your own case. It's you before the holy magistrate. Think about it. Living below in this own sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving along to face temptation sore. Where could I go but to the Also, when we remember Sister Kim White and her family, keeping them in our prayers at the loss of her mother or the entire family, of that be Joseph's a grandmother. So we want to keep that family in our prayer, as well as Sister Sherry Bosley and uh, the Stanton household as well, good friends of our Stanton family from the uh, West Side uh, Congregation of uh, Church of Christ. So we want to keep them in prayers for them. I'd like to ask prayers for the uh, religious Coxwell family. He had a massive heart attack and died on Thursday. That's my uh, aunt's uh, husband. What's, what, what's the family name? Aurelius Cogwell. Cogwell? Yes. Okay, yes, sir. So my 
brother, that's for prayers for the Conwell family. Uh, his uncle who had a massive heart attack uh, this past week. Uh, we'll keep brother being always in our prayers because he always asks, and uh, brother Powell as well. Uh, not just brother Powell, but sister Nelson, uh, the loss of her husband. Uh, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We know that you first loved us. We're coming in the name now of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, asking you, O oh Lord, to hear the feeble petitions of those who have spoken. For we speak in the confidence and trust that whatever we're asking, we will receive in the power in the name of Jesus Christ. For the families need comforting and loss, we ask for your comforting hand and the, and the sweetness of your counsel to guide the, them through these times. For the loved ones who have been challenged by health, different findings, uh, different occurrences, the heart attack, uh, the findings of the mind of our brother's uh, father and even uh, father-in-law or stepfather. We are praying, oh God, that uh, the, uh, the white family, the Stanton household, Sister Boston, Father God, the power, and we ask also to continue to strengthen uh, Sister Cotton, oh Father, and the things that she is dealing with, the changes and challenges that are new to her, we're asking that you hold her upright in her faith, continue to let her not waver, but to trust in the power of your hand. We're asking also for Brother Ben and his family, continue to hold Ben upright and all those around him that love him as well. Father God, I know that I probably forgot someone. Thank you for the intercession of the Holy Spirit who is able to accomplish what we cannot in our feeble state of being. We ask for Lord that you grant every person continue to hold the Garfield Heights Church of Christ in your hands. Also, Lord, won't you remember the brother of one of our uh, one of the bishops, uh, Brother Mark, the brother who suffered a couple of uh, strokes. We're asking, oh Father, that you hold him and his family, even his wife, as she's coming through her ordeal. Just bless the Addison family and the family at Mentor as well as a whole. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your kindness. Forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness in this very hour that we be strengthened and renewed in our spirit and in our soul. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Don't you let nobody turn you around, turn you around, turn you around. to God in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for allowing us to come out this afternoon. Thank you for allowing us to make here safely. I ask that you just continue to strengthen our hearts and strengthen our faith in you. I ask that you allow us to keep this word in our minds and in our hearts as we continue to walk this daily walk. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank God for your patience and your kindness and your uh, patience with the message. Uh, the podcast for our brother uh, McCoy, uh, please uh, engage in that, support that. Uh, he's doing a great outreach to share different messages from different people. Mm -hmm. uh, be, be aware, be alert that all the conversations might not just be from Church of Christ, but what he's doing is in trying to enlighten. Yes. You see, the way you spread Christ is, is so diverse, and God's hand is so diverse in his way and will to get the word out. All we have to do is support and pray. Mm -hmm. Support and pray and let God be God. Uh, also, we want to uh, ask, kindly invite everybody, Facebook family, friends, uh, come and be with us, join us every Sunday at 1.30. Any questions, any comments, uh, please submit them. Please visit our web page. There's been some updates, some changes have been made. Mm -hmm. um, please visit our web page. I've, I've started adding, added a, a minister's page, so I have some conversation on there for you to read and help you through your week as well. Also, uh, ladies' powder room, Thursday, 7 p.m. Pledge cards, yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Please support, <laughs> please support the powder room, yay! Come on now, all y'all sisters can be fast, yeah. And y'all, y'all brothers keep praying for me because I'm not gonna let her take over this church. <laughs> so we, so we need to, so we brothers, y'all need, hey, hey, we need to stand up. <laughs> Nah, but she's doing an excellent job. The ladies are enlightened. Believe me, she has an audience.
across the world, the United States. So we just ask God to continue to bless her in, the, in that powder room. All you young girls, sisters, y'all need to get on there. Some educational yeah. material in there. Yeah. Help fortify you as young women in the kingdom. Help strengthen you as well. Uh, your pledge cards, pledge cards. Uh, you can make your offering online at Garfield Heights Church of Christ. Uh, dot com. Uh, again, uh, we are in still in uh, not necessarily the wilderness, but we're at the Jordan. So we haven't crossed over yet to the land of milk and honey. And otherwise, we need to keep all of our attention on the plan and the goal. And we are trying to wait on God, but we got to be prepared. That's so right. when God moves, we can move just like that. Just like that. Yes. So we have to uh, keep up forward movement. Uh, what else we got? That's it. Anything else? Anything else? Brothers, sisters, nothing else? You know, if y'all have any questions, you can always ask me about anything I said, talk, not just this Sunday, but previous Sunday. Please always don't go home with questions. Don't go home being challenged. I try not to preach over you, but I try to carry you a little bit deeper because we got to be rooted and grounded because the enemy is not sparing. He don't care if you're a baby in Christ. He don't care if you don't know all the word of God. He's going for the knockout punch. And so we've got to be armed and ready when he assails us. Yes. We need um, lady volunteers for community work that we will be doing in Garfield Heights. Okay, so we're going to need some lady volunteers. To make it will be in, in touch with everybody. So make it so it's going to be nothing strenuous. You don't have to worry about how much work is going to be. This is all. Remember, you have the indictment. You got some charges. So we're going to, she's going to let you know all the details. Yeah, uh, we're our, trying to, yeah, our name will be on um, advertisement that will be out in the community. And our name, our church will be broadcast on um, anything that is going to be publicized via radio or TV media. Yeah, so mm -hmm. get Garfield out there so we can be right. more active in the community, especially the area we're trying to target. That's it. Anything else? God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.